I'm Max Venus, and in this video, we're going to look at channel settings in FL Studio. I've got this track that I'm working on. Uh, I've got this sample at the bottom there. Uh, it's this one. So you can hear it's got quite a long tail on it. So um, to open up the sample settings here, you just need to double click on the pattern and come into the channel rack here and click on the actual the sample here, the name of the sample in the uh, in the channel rack. It opens up the channel settings here. So we can see if we just click on the waveform, it's going to trigger the sound. Uh, at the top, we've got options to load a new sample, locate the sample in our browser, and then just remove it altogether. Um, you don't really need to worry about the content here. The de-clicking can be useful if you're working on uh, sounds with clicks in it. If you're recording, it can there's some different algorithms, algorithms in there that might remove those clicks. Uh, we've got the playback start offset. Now, if you're looping the sample, this is going to offset the start point of that loop. So I'm just going to create a quick loop on that so I can demo that. So you can see as it's triggering round, I've, uh, it's playing... Oh yeah, sorry, I'm just going to adjust the crossfade so you can actually hear the start. So as it, as it loops round for the second time, I'm just going to exa uh, exaggerate that. So the second time it loops round, it's triggering back at the start of the sample. Uh, but the first time it's triggered, I'm offsetting it. So you might want to use that if you're experimenting with some looping. I'm just going to turn the loop off now. Uh, there's also ping pong loop, sorry, let me just demo that for you. So it, it takes the first half of the loop and puts it at the end. So it creates an absolute transition for you. So you could uh, just put a... So you can create these kind of weird transitional sounds if you like. So I'm just going to turn that off now. Turn off the loop altogether. Okay, so you've got the uh, options at the top here for time stretching. You've got pitch. There's a few different options. Uh, multiplicator. Adjusting your algorithm. And then time, so time stretching altogether. You can get into some extreme effects with that, so fun times. I'm just going to reset those knobs. Uh, you can uh, change the mode of that resampling, so experiment with those. Uh, different modes work for different applications, so vocal loops might need a uh, real resample mode or stretch, and then drum loops, they tend to work with mono, but FL Studio has a auto detection, so it does normally pick the right one for you there. Uh, so moving down on the page here, you, you've got an option to remove DC offset, so if you're recording, uh, maybe some hardware has some DC hum in it, you can use this option to remove that. You've got the option to reverse polarity, normalize the sample, so bring it up to uh, 0 dB. It takes the loudest point in the sample and pulls that up to 0 dB, so good to normalize all your samples. You can fade the stereo. You've got the option to reverse the sample and swap the stereo around, so swap left and right. There's also sample start there, so you can trigger where the sample's starting. And you can also adjust the length there, so we could pull off that reverb tail if we wanted. You can adjust the in, so you can create an in fade. And again with out, so you can just create an out fade. Uh, there's the looping cross fade, which I showed before. Okay, and there's also uh, the option to trim the silence here, so what it does is it detects any silence in the sample and removes it, whether it's at the start or the end, so that's great for cleaning up samples. So moving over now to uh, the envelope instrument settings tab, we've got um, a few options here for the envelope of the sample itself, so a good one to use is uh, the volume, so you can just trigger the volume envelope here, so now we've got a volume ADSR envelope on there. So I tend to use this if I wanted to create a small decay on the uh, on the sound, maybe remove a bit of the tail. So I adjust the envelope, and now I've got in-depth control of where that where that tail sits, basically. And there's uh, different options for adjusting the, the tension of the curve that you're using. So under decay, you can adjust the tension of that curve. So you can really hone in and create the kind of curve that you want. Just showing you there on attack as well, and the same thing for release. If you've got a release on, you can adjust that curve there. So a really good in-depth uh, ADSR there, great for sampling. 
So there's also uh, a filter section here in the sampler inbuilt. So I've just got a uh, low pass here, the cutoff frequency, and then the uh, resonance. And there's all different types of filters you can choose from, all your low pass, bypass, and ha uh, high pass. And then over to this tab here. So uh, there's a few adjustments that you can make here. The pan, the volume level, also got access to the, um, the filters here that we saw on the other page. So these are great for automating here if you wanted to, it's all in one page. Uh, you can add portamento to the sample, which is pretty interesting to play around with. And you can have mono mode as well. So just the slide length of that. So moving on from the, uh, the Porto there, we've got some options for setting up a gate if you wanted to. Then there's also some performance related options for key tracking, adjusting the filter as you go up and down the keyboard. Moving down, you've got group. Uh, so what you can do here is you can cut things. So for instance, if I was to go into a synth and set the same option to one, and then set this also to one, what it would do is when that synth, uh, so basically, if the synth was playing and then this sound triggered, it would cut the synth as soon as that sound, this sound was triggered. So you'd get no overlap if you're moving into a breakdown or something like that. Uh, there's also the arpeggiator here. So this is great for obviously creating arpeggios. <laughs> so I've got a pretty high speed there. So yeah, I've got a sample. I've got a uh, snare sound, so it's not sounding great, but. This is good for um, obviously synth sounds and stuff. You can basically find this tab under all VST. So whether you've got a third party or a uh, image line synth, you can add arpeggiators in here, which is really cool. And you can play around with the uh, gate functionality in time. Okay, so just to uh, finish off then, at the bottom here, you've got the keyboard. Um, you can see that's where I'm triggering the note and you can also transpose this. So. As I'm right clicking now on the top of that keyboard, I'm transposing it up and down. And then if you uh, left click and hold, you can select which area is actually going to be active on the keyboard for this sample. So if I just move that down and play outside that range, I'm not getting anything. So you can set on the keyboard where that's going to be triggered from. Okay, so we've had a look at the channel settings for an uh, audio sample, but the great thing is you can use these the same window in also VSTs. So I've loaded in a uh, synth here on a VST, but I've also navigated into the uh, channel settings on the wrench here, and I've got the same window. So I just wanted to show you the power of this arpeggiator here. So I've got a, uh, a synth here. And now we, if we put some notes in on the uh, playlist and just play this through. So we've got an arpeggiator there built in. So this applies across any VST, so you don't need to worry about learning that specific arpeggiator in that VST. You can just learn this one arpeggiator and it applies across every single synth that you've got, which is really cool. So you can obviously adjust the time there. And it goes pretty crazy. So, And you can also just right click and set it to a specific beat. So you can have it actually synced into the uh, to the actual tempo. There's a slide option, so if you've got your, if you've got the uh, portamento set up, you can actually use that to slide between the notes uh, and create a kind of a, a porto arpeggiated sound. There's the gate option, which shortens each note. Okay, so there's also a range option here. Um, if we introduce this now, it's going to introduce another octave on the sound. Okay, so you can play around with that and see, get some cool effects. The repeat option, basically if I've got some range introduced here, it repeats the first uh, iteration, so the first octave, you can set it to how many times it repeats ultimately. So you can, can repeat it twice and then move up into the next octave and then it will repeat that next octave twice and so on. So you can see there it's repeating both those octaves twice after each other. Uh, and then you've also got this option to introduce any scale that you want to your arpeggiator, which is pretty interesting. So. So 
So there's a huge list there to choose from. Okay, so there's also some different options here for the arpeggiator. We've got the up option, down, up and down, and then a hold functionality. So I'll just show you, demo those for you now. So that's it going up. Now it starts coming down from the highest octave. Let's just increase that. And then you've got up and down. Then there's a uh, hold option, so it stays up and plays one round at the top and then one round at the bottom again. Then there's also a uh, random. So completely random. Okay, so that's the arpeggiator section. We're just going to turn the arpeggiator off now and show the, uh, the fat and echo delay mode. So if you've got a synth sound like this, you've just got MIDI, but it's basically a MIDI kind of modifier, if you like. So you can feed it, and then you create a delay in MIDI. So it's actually triggering, triggering in MIDI those four delays there, and you can set the number of delays that you get. So it's just doing one, up to three, down to two, etc. You can adjust the time, so the gap between each of those notes. We set some. So it's like a MIDI delay, if you like. You can also adjust the pitch. So the pitch of each of those delayed MIDI notes goes up or down, depending on this knob here. So interesting MIDI effects to use. There's also a ping pong. This will only work if you've got the uh, pan options enabled. Another feature we're going to look at on the channel settings is the fat mode here. So I've just highlighted fat mode, so I've engaged that. Uh, so what this does, it ultimately layers on, um, well, layers of the MIDI note that you've got. So if I play a C here, as I introduce the feed, you can see that we're adding multiple presses of that C in, and actually the number here is representing how many layers you're adding. So it gets louder and more intense, and then you can obviously bring in the feed. But when this becomes really cool is when you start playing around with the pitch here. So if you just reset the pitch, it's obviously pressing C, but as I pull this up, the pitch starts spreading across the keyboard. So if we just turn the echo down a bit. So you can start creating maybe chords, stabs. And if you go all the way up, then basically it spits it entirely across the octave. And the number there represents the number of uh, MIDI, MIDI keys that it's duplicating. So in this video, we've looked at FL Studio's advanced channel settings with audio and MIDI examples.